Okay, everybody, my name is Lol, and welcome to the channel. So, you may notice I'm not American, I'm actually Australian. So, well, actually Scottish Australian. It's a long story, we'll get into that later. So, I thought we'd watch this video called America Compared. Why other countries treat their people so much better. So, let's jump in. I thought this would be very interesting to have a look at. So, let's go and let's check out what is going on. This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help me make more content like this, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash second thought. I'm going to say something that will probably offend many of my viewers. Let me preface this by saying that I, as an American, include myself in the following statement. Americans are quite possibly the most willfully ignorant people on the face of the planet. We have access oh, to the sum total of all that, human knowledge, yet our right, understanding right of the it. world rarely extends beyond our own country. And even then, the majority of Americans believe in a vision of the country that does not actually exist. It's not that okay. we're stupid, we just tend to blindly accept that the US is the greatest place on Earth, and therefore don't see any reason to educate ourselves about the realities of the rest of the world. In this episode, we're going to pull back the curtain on how America actually compares to other countries, and consider why okay. the richest country on Earth fails to treat its people with dignity and fairness. I'm going to provide a list of okay. important topics, then for each item we'll compare the American experience with that of citizens from other nations. Hopefully by providing a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll be able to see the stark contrast between how most Americans see their country and how it really stacks up against the competition. Now remember, these are only opinions, so um, if you have something, let me know down there. To give you an know. idea of let's just how skewed the American perception of our country really is, let's start with a pretty shocking example. Compensation for what are considered low-skill jobs. We'll take the quintessential American company, McDonald's. McDonald's is the world's largest restaurant chain by revenue. It operates in over 100 countries and serves over 69 million customers every day. As of 2018, every day, damn, that's a 18, lot of people. 18, McDonald's was the second largest private employer with 1.7 million employees, behind Walmart's 2.3 million. How many okay. times have you heard someone refer to McDonald's jobs or workers in a derogatory manner? For some reason, people who work at McDonald's are seen as inferior or lazy or have any number of other unfair and unkind assessments leveled at them. This probably stems from the old notion of flipping burgers being a job anyone can perform. But the animosity towards low-wage workers has grown significantly in the past few decades. And in America, McDonald's workers really do suffer a low wage. As of 2020, the average crew member at McDonald's makes $9 per hour. The average McDonald's cashier makes $8 per hour. The federal how come they get paid different? I thought they worked in the same McDonald's. Okay. The federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25, a rate which has not been raised in over a decade and which should not Damn. be considered a reasonable wage for any position, considering $7. the fact that a full-time minimum wage worker cannot afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment anywhere in the United States and can't afford a one-bedroom apartment in over 95% of U.S. counties. Now, the all too common response to data like this is something like, well, yeah, it's not a hard job. You should just find a better one. Here's a simple question. Should any job, regardless of technical skill required, pay workers so little that they cannot afford to rent even the smallest place to live? Not to mention other necessities like utilities, food, and medicine. Absolutely not. That Especially when Americans have to pay for their health system, you know, that... I, I, yeah, I don't know how they do it. That is inhumane that. and cruel, especially coming from the second largest employer in the richest country on the planet. Other notable objections include, McDonald's has to make a profit. If they pay their workers more, they might go out of business. First of all, huh? if you can't pay your workers a fair wage, your yeah. company should not be in business. End of story. But again, McDonald's is not struggling to make ends meet. In 2019, McDonald's raked in $21 billion in revenue. But no matter oh. how obvious the exploitation of low-wage workers, Americans are hell-bent on praising the very companies doing the exploiting. Take this article on Reader's Digest, for example. It's titled, This is what McDonald's workers really get paid. You see that and think, oh, nice. Finally, some news showing how poorly these workers are compensated. Then you scroll down and, nope, they're actually praising McDonald's, saying things like, the food chain is also great for paying their workers fairly. And, McDonald's is one of the highest paying fast food chains in the United States. This level of sycophancy is insane, 
If eight or nine dollars an hour is some of the highest pay in the industry, that doesn't indicate that McDonald's is paying fairly. Nah, it indicates that a massive industry. chunk of the population is being paid poverty That's wages. Right. This That's is where taking an international perspective is so critical. If all you see is feel-good stories about how well McDonald's workers are paid, you'll never know how badly American workers are actually being treated. Let's take the same company, the same position, but in a different country. Here's a McDonald's in Denmark. The average McDonald's worker in Denmark, for doing the same low-skill job, makes $22 per hour. Well, hold on, you hear Reader's Digest scream from across the Atlantic. McDonald's workers in America get paid vacation days after just a year of work. Wow, enticing. In Denmark, when you're hired at McDonald's, not only are you making nearly three times what you would make in an American Mickey D's, you also instantly have access to a full year of paid family leave and a pension. No slaving away for a year to prove your value to the company. You're hired and you're treated fairly. Simple as that. McDonald's- Yeah, um, okay. Very interesting. In Australia, you get holidays as well. Uh, you don't have to work. They're uh, pro rata, so... McDonald's can afford to compensate all their workers like this, the but they won't. Because US laws allow them to exploit American workers to the point where they're basically slaves, earning the bare minimum to survive, paying all of their income and often going into debt just to pay rent, and having no way to escape this vicious cycle because they're working such long hours. This is the case across all of America's low-wage jobs, of which there are many. The plight of the low-wage worker is incredibly dire, and all you have to do to understand that is look at how those same workers are treated in other wealthy countries. Let's move on to another topic, work-life balance. But, I mean, to, you know, it looks like that, you know, Denmark is getting paid three times the amount of wage, but then you've got to take into account, like, you know, what's the, what's the cost of living in that country, you know, is $22 a good wage, you know, in that country? He didn't really... You know, touch on that either. So I don't know. I don't know anything about you know. So. Fair wages are definitely part of this equation. If you're paid fairly, you don't need to work a second job, which will free up mm. your time to be spent elsewhere. But we're going to focus on other metrics, specifically the length of the work week, vacation time, and parental leave. Let's start with the U.S. Most Americans would say that 40 hours per week is full time. That seems to be the general consensus. But, in keeping with the country's exploitative labor practices, the hilariously named Fair Labor Standards Act does not actually define what qualifies as full-time. That's left up to the employer. Okay, why does this matter? Well, think of your past part-time jobs. Did you get any benefits? Healthcare? 401k? Probably not. Most benefits, uh, when they're yeah. offered at all, are reserved for full-time full employees. Time. Companies don't want to provide benefits yeah. because they affect their bottom line. America is all about cutting costs, and providing workers with fair compensation is a cost. So, imagine you apply for a full-time job at Best Buy. You're offered the job, but they tell you they only have part-time positions, but they can give you almost full-time. They make it sound like they're doing you a favor, offering you uh, more hours. See, that's that little, oh, we'll give you 36 hours. It's not full-time, but you've got almost full-time. You're almost getting all those hours but you're not getting any benefit the normal part-time but this is just another example of employers exploiting their workers if you work 37 hours per week you're uh, essentially uh, a full-time employee exactly. but they don't have to provide you any sort of benefits no health care yeah. no vacation i mean that happens here in australia too don't get me wrong nothing this is a common practice companies will hire people but keep them just below the threshold for full-time to avoid providing fair compensation i've seen it happen I used to work at Best Buy and they would do it all the time. They call it permanent part-time here in Australia. And that's just the companies who are still trying to appear generous. Others will simply not offer benefits at all, or set their full-time positions at 50 or 60 hours per week. Sales positions are notorious for this. They'll often say, well, we expect you to work 40 hours, but all the top sellers are working 60 to 70 hours per week. This is coercion. Nah, They're trying to pressure you into working more hours to benefit them and the compensation is never what they claim it will be. By allowing employers to define full-time work, American workers are held captive by corporations, forced to either work absurd hours to qualify for full-time benefits or find a second job to help cover the cost of things like health insurance. Both of these options lead to a terrible work-life balance, and as real wages have decreased and benefits have been offered less and less over the years, huge numbers of American workers have developed an unhealthy work-life balance. For example, in 1960, when workers had real bargaining power, only 20% of American women worked. Today, 70% of children live in households where both parents are working full-time. 
Where does all this lead? As of 2020, over 85% of American men and 66% of women work more than 40 hours per week. We work 137 more hours per year than Japanese workers, 260 more than the British, and 499 more hours per year than the French. Why do other countries have such a better balance? Because many of them have laws that cap the length of the full-time work week. Companies are required to pay their workers fairly and allow enough time off for employees to maintain a healthy work-life balance. That's not the case in the US. Vacation time is a similar story. Whereas many other countries mandate that employers provide paid vacation and sick days, the US does not. In every industrialized nation, workers get more paid vacation days and holidays than in the US. Here's a depressing graph to illustrate just how poorly we treat our workers. So, Australia's down there, um, working days 12, uh, 20, and you get nine paid holidays. France, 31, Spain, 34, oh, Austria, 38, America, Ooh. Zero. Zero paid vacation days, zero paid holidays. How, how could you do that? How, how could you get zero? How, um, I don't know how you would do that. In where I work in Australia, you know, we get four weeks, four weeks holidays to do what you want, you know, and then we get sick days on top of that. You know, if you're sick, you can call in sick and you'll get paid for that day. Uh, not, and also on top of that, holidays, sick days, we get about, I think it's about 11 or 12 public holidays, which is where um, yeah, it's public holidays because the public are off. You know, the shops are shut, the banks are shut. You know, things like, you know, national holidays, stuff like that, you know. So we get 11 of them a year as well so man we got a pretty bloody good in australia and remember these really are the mandated good. figures every austrian worker gets a minimum of 38 paid days off per year even in the worst possible employment situation they'd still get 38 paid days off yeah. in the u.s many Not workers true. are lucky to get christmas or thanksgiving off at all and the odds that it's a paid holiday next to zero let's move on to our final comparison okay, paid parental leave Many Americans aren't even aware this is a thing, so let me explain. When an employee of a company has a child, sometimes they're offered parental leave, a period of time where they can stay home from work to bond with and take care of their new baby. This greatly benefits the employee, the child, and in the long run, the company, because the employee will be happier, less stressed, and more loyal to the company. Of course, offering paid parental leave doesn't benefit corporations in the short term. And if there's one thing that encapsulates the American business philosophy, it's short-term gains over all else. So it won't surprise you to learn that the U.S. is the only industrialized nation on the planet that does not mandate some amount of paid parental leave. This may be wow. shocking to my American viewers, because being able to get paid to spend time with your newborn child sounds like an impossible dream in our dystopian labor market. And honestly, it probably is impossible. I think it's... If I remember, I think it's six weeks in Australia. Is it six weeks or eight weeks? I can't remember exactly. But it's two weeks for the father as well. You can then take up to a year off your job and then come back after a year if you want to. Uh, but they have to hold your job open for a year. Um, okay, wow, that's... Well, in our current America. Okay. We're so invested in self-destructive capitalism that even suggesting the possibility of paid parental leave would put U.S. politicians out of a job. That's not the case in the rest of the industrialized world. In fact, every other OECD nation, and even in many third world countries, new parents are guaranteed at least several weeks of leave. Let's take a look at a few of them. Ethiopia, a country with an annual gross national income of under $900 per person, offers 90 days of leave with 100% wow. pay. Madagascar, 14 weeks at 100%. Wow. Afghanistan, 90 days. Denmark, 52 weeks. Norway, 56 weeks. France, 16 weeks at 100% pay for your first child, up to 26 weeks for your third, on top of 104 unpaid weeks. Lithuania, 52 weeks at 100%, plus an additional 52 weeks at 80%. Wow. Again, the United States does That's not mandate good. a single day of paid parental leave, even for the mother. And the father is never considered. <laughs> this means that workers in America have to choose to either pay the exorbitant cost of child care, or have one parent quit their job in order to take care of the child. These are both bad options, which often lead to economic precarity. 
But that doesn't matter to the companies employing American workers. Profit is the only thing that matters. Hopefully seeing these labor practices compared like this has made it clear that not only is the U.S. not living up to its claim to being the greatest nation on earth, but also that it consistently ranks poorly and often dead last in terms of labor metrics. Why is it that the wealthiest, wow. most powerful nation on earth can't pay their workers a fair wage or provide health care, vacation time, or paid parental leave? You should realize by now that it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. Everything in America is beholden to the almighty dollar. Profit is the only motivator. If an action does not produce a greater profit, it will not be considered. Over the last few decades, Americans have watched as our livelihoods, our quality of life, and our dignity have all been stripped away by those who already make obscene amounts of money. Those in power say we're all in this together, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The ultra-wealthy and the world's largest corporations rely on Americans remaining ignorant. They rely on us accepting the lie that America is the greatest nation on earth, that it couldn't possibly get any better. All you have to do to shatter that lie is to take a look around the world. Other nations take care of their citizens. Even impoverished nations, or nations that we've bombed into oblivion, take better care of their people than the U.S. does. American workers need to relearn the language of class struggle, and work together to break the wheel of the capitalist machine. If we want to claim that the United States is the greatest place on Earth, we need to make it that way. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this kind of content is supported wow. by my patrons on Patreon. That's, um, this type of video... That is very sobering. You know, as I said, I live in Australia, you know, we got access to, you know, uh, healthcare in Australia is free, you know, by uh, Medicare. Um, you know, we don't pay to stay in a hospital. Um, you can go private. Sure, you can go private and pay for it. Um, get your own insurance and whatever else, but um, generally you don't have to. Um, we get um, paid holidays, paid sick days, paid public holidays. Um, man, that is very sobering. Very, very sobering. When, you know, you hear about uh, America, especially in Australia, you know, um, you know, how good it is. And, you know, they drive these big cars and the big houses. But man, they're working for it. They are working their ass for it. Um, that's very, very scary. Very, very scary. Um, you know, when you look at other, other countries around the world compared to, you know, if you were living in America, let me know. Let me know if that is true statements that um, he was saying. So I have heard a little bit about that, you know, especially about the, the paid holidays. It's like, oh. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's, yeah, so... Um, that's... All I can say from that is um, very, very sobering. You know, sometimes you take for granted that you're working, you complain about going to work and, you know... But looking at that, it's like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be complaining. Maybe I should be, you know, taking a step back and saying, you know, thank God I've got these things in place that, you know, are there to protect me, you know, when I work, when I don't aren't able to work, you know, so, um, wow, okay, that's very, very sobering, um, let me know what you guys thought of that too, so, thumbs up if you did enjoy it, remember, if you're new here, make sure you hit that big red button down there, um, you can come back and watch any of the other reactions on the channel, we have plenty on there for you to, to look at as well too, so, but guys, as I always say, make sure you stay safe wherever you are, I'll definitely see you in the next reaction video. Did you enjoy that? Why not check out their playlist?